Hello everyone. Good evening. How are you today? Welcome to the Brainy Brats channel. This is our second live stream episode. Please put down your name in the comments. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Nadeem Razak. Hi. Please put down your names as well so that I can address you by your name. Hi Ananya, how are you sweetie? Welcome. Alright, I have a very compelling story for you today. I'm so excited to narrate it to you. Hi Afia. Um, Adya Zawar, welcome. Hi Swara. SSK's Creative Corner Swara. Alright. Hi Naisa. Hi Mr. Great. There can only be one Mr. Great. Shlok Lahoti. Hello. Amrita Dala, that's Shanaya. Hi Shanaya. Hi Shlok Sharma. Hey Garima Varma. All right. Hi Shorya. Jia Veer Nekar. Uh, we have Atharva Shanoi. Rihanna. Welcome. Welcome. We have Kushal. Mikhail. All right. Are you excited for today's class? Um, Atharva Shanoi. I think I already addressed you. Okay. So let's begin. Uh, thank you so much, Adya. So kind of you. Um, Tick Tacky 13. That's Tiana, I'm guessing. Uh, hi, Viana. Welcome. Hi, Anika. Sid, how are you, Sid? Proud Road Gaming. Put down your name. Thank you so much, Garima. Kairan Divyanka Maikar. Welcome, welcome. Mandeep, that's Mandeep. You're very excited, Afia. Well, so am I. All right. You love the new masterclass, Garima. I am so elated to hear that. In fact, that's just what I was about to bring up. Um, I hope you've watched the new Brainy Brats themed masterclass. This little boy here, he's unleashing his imagination onto paper. And uh, we had so much fun creating this masterclass. This masterclass was by Brainy Brats, for you Brainy Brats and about Brainy Brats. So please go watch it after this live stream. And uh, put down in the comments what you like most about Brainy Brats. We'd love to hear your feedback. All right. Hi, Tanush. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Divyanka. So kind of you. Rohini Shanoi. I think that's Atharva. Atharva, do you want a horror story? <laughs> All right. Um, Vivan Thard. Hi. I'm doing very well, Vivan. How are you? Uh, so, yes. Like I was saying, please go watch the Brainy Brats Masterclass after this live stream. Um, and we also release this Masterclass because we are commencing admissions for the new academic year tomorrow. So I look forward to teaching you for another year. All right, so let's begin. Arika. Hi, Arika. Okay, so today's story is called The Perfect Incantation. All right, The Perfect Incantation. Now, you've done this word incantation, oops, in the Harry Potter Masterclass. Incantation. In the Harry Potter Masterclass. So, what is an incantation? Can anyone tell me an incantation? Um, in fact, Harry here says, a key of firebolt, right? And he is faced by this Hungarian horn tail, this formidable Hungarian horn tail. And he's calling for his firebolt. He's summoning his firebolt. So he uses a spell. So an incantation is a magic spell. Welcome, Sachi. Hi. Um, I hope um, I addressed most of you. And if I haven't, please put your name down and I'll comment and I'll respond to you later. All right. So yes, that is a magic spell. Absolutely right. Inayat. And we have um, Shlok. Absolutely right. An incantation is a spell. So today's story is about the perfect spell, the perfect incantation. Let's begin. My, my lovely volunteers, please put down the name of the story in case we have any latecomers here. So let's begin. The cab honked for the third time. Aunt Vera, your cab is waiting, I called. So a cab has come for this lady whose name is Aunt Vera. All right. Aunt Vera rushed down the stairs, lugging her beat up old, old suitcase. So she had this old suitcase, which wasn't in the best condition. All right, and she's rushing down the stairs. She wore a huge straw hat and a baggy sundress. 
and she wore the repugnant garlic necklace she always wore. So Aunt Vera is actually a very eccentric person, right? She is kind of idiosyncratic, very quirky, eccentric, very different, unconventional. And uh, she dresses like this. She wears a garlic necklace. Sometimes it even has some ginger. She looks funny. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. So that's Aunt Vera. Let's imagine that this is Aunt Vera. All right. So she said the garlic kept away the evil spirits. Right. So Aunt Vera, who believes in magic, right, she's of the opinion that this garlic, it banishes the evil spirits. So Aunt Vera is so eccentric with all her talk about spells and curses. So Aunt Vera, like I said, she's an anomalous person, very idiosyncratic, right? Slightly kooky. And um, she wears a revolting, repugnant garlic necklace. Imagine how much she must stink. Ew. All right. I asked the travel spirits about this fight, she said. So... Aunt Vera, being eccentric, says, Oh, I, I prayed to the travel spirits and I asked them about this flight. They said today was a good day to fly. So she thinks that, the, that these spirits communicate with her and that's precisely why she's flying by air that day. I glanced at my mom. She rolled her eyes. So the girl who's, who's narrating the story, her mother rolls her eyes. She, you know, she doesn't believe in all this mumbo jumbo nonsense and smiled at me. Take care, Vera, mom said, giving her sister a big hug. So they're bidding adieu, they're bidding goodbye to Aunt Vera, they're sending her off. Chevy, Jen, you didn't miss anything, don't worry. Hi, Dia, the tale has just commenced. Okay, we have a Brainy Bratz moderator here in the comments. That's our uh, teacher, Miss Shraddha. Miss Shraddha, welcome. Um, so in case you have any questions, put them down in the comments. And Miss Shraddha is here to dispel your doubts. If you have any other questions, please ask me and I'll do the same. All right, let's continue. Thanks for sharing your room with me, Carrie, Aunt Vera said to me. So Aunt Vera also talks in this whole sing-song way. So thanks for sharing your room with me. I hope I didn't bother you with all my chanting. So Aunt Vera, who believes in magic, would chant all the time. No problem, I lied. Have a good trip. So Carrie, who is the protagonist, the main character of the story, she says, okay, no, no, no problem. She lies and she says, okay, your chanting didn't bother me, Aunt Vera. But obviously the chanting did bother Carrie. As soon as Aunt Vera left, I ran up to my room to air it all out. So she opened up the windows because the room was stinking of garlic. Aunt Vera wore that gross garlic necklace all week long and it really made my room stink. So I quite enjoy eating garlic sometimes with Italian food. But imagine smelling it all the time. That is disgusting, right? So her room was reeking. It was giving off a bad smell, a foul smell. It was malodorous. I opened all my windows as wide as they would go. Then I tore through my junk, searching for my book on magic. So Carrie has also developed a fascination for magic after Aunt Vera has gone, right? So even though she doesn't like the garlic necklace, she has picked up on the fascination for magic. She's intrigued, interested by magic. So she's looking for her book on magic, which is meant for children. You see, my new hobby is magic. So her new leisure activity is magic. I found a half-eaten candy bar, a bag of pretzels, and a book I had been looking for but no magic book. So she finds a lot of junk in her room. So her room is quite unkempt. It's very messy. It's very disorderly, very disorganized. And she's found a half-eaten candy bar. Imagine you're looking through your things and an old candy bar is there. There's a bag of pretzels, but she couldn't find her book on magic. I was about to give up. So she saw this disarray, right? This mess and she's about to give up when I saw something sticking out from under my pillow. So she saw something fascinating, intriguing, right? Sticking out from under her pillow. And it looked like this. So this 
was what was under the pillow. This was sticking out from under the pillow. And doesn't it look quite intriguing, quite interesting? Adya Zavar, what are pretzels? Pretzels are crisps, right? And uh, they look like they've been tied up, right? So you can look it up. So yes, malodorous is a bad odor. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Shraddha. So yes, let's continue. I pulled out a small leather bound book and studied it. So they're going through this leather bound book, this one, this, this book which is bound by leather and it, it is gleaming also, it is shining, right? The title, Magic Spells and Sorcery was in gold letters on the cover. So right on the cover, you saw the title Magic Spells and Sorcery. So it's quite evident that this is an advanced magic book. Now you've done the word sorcerer in the Harry Potter masterclass, right? A sorcerer is a wizard and a sorceress, which you've done in the witch masterclass. So a sorceress is a witch. So sorcery refers to magic. And the book is obviously about magic. It sure wasn't my silly little book of magic tricks. So it wasn't, you know, like those magician's tricks. This was a book on sorcery. This book looked really ancient. It looked really old, like it had a lot of value. It was an antediluvian ancient book. I opened it and saw my aunt's handwriting across the title page, right? So the aunt had written an inscription to Carrie. So it says, Dear Carrie, I hope you find this book useful. Thanks again for sharing your room with me. May the good spirits shine on you. Love, Aunt Vera. Now, if I were to read this in Aunt Vera's voice, it would be, Dear Carrie, I hope you find this book useful. So, and the, the aunt ends, ends this inscription by saying, May the good spirits shine on you. So she is a wacky person. I skimmed the table of contents. So she goes through the contents of the book. Carrie. There were weather spells, love spells, beauty spells, enemy spells, enemy spells, cool, right? So Carrie is so interested, she's so intrigued by this. So there was a cornucopia of spells. Now we did the word cornucopia in the Brainy Brats Masterclass. Could you put down the meaning of cornucopia in the comments? All right, I'll, I'll continue and I'll, I'll look at the comments. Okay, I turned to that page right away. Dozens of spells filled the pages. There was everything from causing people to go bald to making their teeth fall out. So there were spells that you could wreak a lot of havoc with. You could, you could create a lot of mischief with, right? So there were spells which could make people go bald. Imagine you dislike someone. You can, you can kind of cast a spell and all their hair will pop out and even their teeth could fall out. Yes? What are you doing? I spun around. My nosy little sister, Elizabeth, stood in my doorway. So while she was going through this book of spells, while Carrie was going through this book of spells, Elizabeth, her little sister, right, who was about seven or eight, was standing in the doorway. All right. So, um... Absolutely right, Pooja, Jain, uh, plenty, abundance, a large amount of something very good. A cornucopia is when something very good is present in abundance, right, in profusion. So there, were, there was a cornucopia of spells, there was a profusion, an abundance, a plethora of spells. Wonderful work, brainy brats. All right. I told you not to come into my room. I hollered. So she's shrieking at her little sister and saying, I told you not to come into my room. What are you doing in my room? I'm not in your room, Libby argued. I'm in the hallway. So they're having a typical sibling fight. Well, you're way too close to my room, I said. Go away, go away. This isn't baby stuff here. So she's shooing away her little sister. She stuck her tongue out at me. So she's a cheeky little girl. She's like, who would want to go in your smelly room anyway? Yuck! She held her nose. So the room was still stinking. It was still reeking of garlic. There was a garlic stench. It was stinking to high heaven. Right? It smelled malodorous, like I told you. So, yeah. I slammed the door in her face. So Carrie slammed the door in Elizabeth's face and went back to my book. 
I ran my finger over the spells. So she's going through the spells again. There was an aging spell. So say you could, you wanted to turn someone into a wizened, wrinkled, elderly person. You could cast a spell on them. Then there was a wart growing spell. A wart is a small growth on the skin. I'll show you what it looks like. It doesn't look the best. And witches sometimes have it on their noses. So that's a wart. This is a wart on someone's finger. So there was a wart growing spell. W-A-R-T. So as soon as I saw the forgetfulness spell. So Carrie finds a spell called the forgetfulness spell. And the moment she sees it, she thinks... I know what I had to do. She says, yes, I'm going to use this spell. Linda McFly. It was perfect for her. Right? So Carrie wanted to cast this forgetfulness spell on a girl called Linda McFly. Linda McFly is the meanest girl in the entire 8th grade. So Carrie happens to be in the 8th grade. And her classmate Linda McFly is a very mean malevolent girl very obnoxious girl right and we had taught you another word for hateful someone who is deserving of hate which was in the Roald Dahl master class and we had used it for um, I believe the grand high witch so please put down the word in the comments um, the word which means hateful deserving of hate it starts with D right so Linda McFly was malevolent, she was obnoxious, and she was d -d 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 -dis. Please put it down in the comments. Okay, I'll continue. So Linda was very mean. Once she put a dead bird in my desk. That's so revolting. So Linda was so mean, she put a, a dead bird in Carrie's desk. Absolutely right. Cosmos of content. Put down your name, Despicable. You were the first. We have Kenisha Padihari, Despicable. Naveen Pursnani, I believe that's Hitanshu. Excellent. Shlok, Despicable. Sarah Garg, fabulous. All right, you guys are amazing. <laughs> All right, some applause for you, wonderful brainy brats. Brilliant brainy brats, rather. Okay. Another time, she told everyone, I was in love with Timmy Wardell. So, Linda McFly was so mean. She was so despicable. She put a dead bird in her classmate's desk. She would spread these silly rumors that, oh, you're in love with Timmy Wardell. Linda loves spreading rumors and saying mean things about people. So she likes spreading gossip about people. She enjoys saying very unsavory, offensive things. So she is, like all of you said, amazing work. She's a despicable person, right? Linda prides herself on her perfect clothes, perfect hair, and perfect grades. So everything about Linda is perfect. It's impeccable. It's immaculate, right? So she looks like this. Let's imagine that Linda McFly, her name is Linda McFly, looks like this. So she looks quite perfect. Her perfect hair, her perfect clothes, her perfect grades, and she's also very mean. So she's the quintessential mean girl. She's never late for class, and she never forgets her homework. It's enough to make you puke. You get so irritated by her. It's so nauseating. You're like, Ugh, she's so perfect. All right. I read the forgetfulness spell. It probably wouldn't work. But still, it was worth a try. So Carrie thinks to herself that maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe it's just silly. But let's just try. Let's give it a go. Linda McFly definitely deserved it. First, I read... Write your enemy's name on a piece of paper. So the first instruction in the forgetfulness spell is you take a piece of paper and write your enemy's name. Write your opponent adversary's name, right? Place the paper in a glass jar. So you take a glass jar like this and you place the paper in that glass jar. Then spit in the jar and seal it tightly. So you open it up, spit in it and seal it tightly, close it tightly. So she's supposed to write her arch rival, her nemesis name in, on the piece of paper. So your nemesis is your, is your enemy, your adversary, your opponent, your arch rival, your main enemy. Like Harry Potter's arch rival in the Harry Potter series was Lord Voldemort, right? So yes, let's continue. 
I found an old jar I kept changing. So like I have this jar here. She had this jar where she kept some change. She kept some coins in that jar. Then I wrote Linda's name on a piece of paper and stuffed it inside along with a big gob of spit. She went, a big lump of spit. She spat on the paper with, with Linda McFly's name on it. Then I returned to the instructions. So the next instruction says, face north. So you face in the north direction and chant the following phrase three times. So you need to repeat this thrice. So the so it goes like this. The incantation, the spell goes like this. By morning when the sun is shining, your enemy will forget the one thing that is extremely important. This they will regret. So I'm going to show you the incantation. Just a moment, please. Yeah, here you go. By morning when the sun is shining, your enemy will forget the one thing that is extremely important, this they will regret, right? So she needed to chant this thrice. Then I had to place the jar on my windowsill. She had to take the jar, place it on the windowsill where the moonlight would touch it. The spell needed the moonlight, the moon beams to activate it. Later, when I was lying in bed, I thought about how stupid the whole thing was. So Carrie's thinking to herself, oh, this is so childish, so ridiculous, so ludicrous. It, it, it probably won't even work. Forgetfulness spell. What a waste of time. It seems so inane and so brainless. Quite a nonsensical, daft thing to do. What do you think? Do you think this spell will even work? Kenisha says, I'm trying this. <laughs> Kenisha, it's not going to work. I promise you. Or we don't know. Let's see. Okay. I stared at the jar on my windowsill. So she's staring at the jar and the moonlight shimmered on the glass. The way the rays of the sun, the sun beams are hitting this glass jar. Similarly, the moon beams were hitting Carrie's glass jar. Right? And she wonders, was the jar glowing? Was the jar shining brightly? All right. So, um... Chevy Jen, what do you want to see again? You've asked me to show you something again. Please put it down. So, she's wondering, was the jar glowing? Was it shining brightly? Now, we've taught you one word for shining brightly in the Diwali Masterclass. Um, it starts with S. So, please put that word down in the comments. Right? The next day, I showed up at math class early. Math was our first period. So, the first class they had at school was mathematics. I'm usually the last one in. So Carrie abhors mathematics. She, she dislikes mathematics, right? But today I was curious about my spell. So she was quite intrigued. She was eager to know whether this spell would work. So excellent scintillating. All right, Swara, Cosmos of Content. Cosmos of Content, put down your name. Sh Shilpa Gupta, absolutely right. Avni Agrawal, Shlok. Excellent, scintillating. The word is scintillating. Fabulous. Okay. Here you go. Absolutely right. Scintillating. So, so the jar was scintillating because of the, the beams of the moon, the moon beams. So the next day, they're in math class. Linda walked in wearing her perfect hair and a perfect braid down her back. So Linda came in looking all impeccable, immaculate, spotless, amazing. She slid into the chair next to mine. So she sat down next to Carrie. She's Carrie's class partner. All right. When Mr. Pratt asked everyone for their homework, I held my breath. So Mr. Pratt was their mathematics teacher. And he asked everyone, come on, everyone, give me your homework, your, your assignment, the assignment for your abode. And Carrie's holding her breath. She can't breathe. She's waiting to see if Linda has forgotten her mathematics homework. So she's waiting with bated breath. She's holding her breath and seeing what's going to happen. Don't be crazy, I told myself. There's no way the spell would have worked. Little Miss Perfect would never forget anything. So she thinks to herself, no, this couldn't possibly happen. It, this spell, this incantation couldn't possibly work. I ripped my homework out of my notebook. 
So at their school, they would have these notebooks where they they had to tear the homework out, and they have to present it to the teacher. So Carrie does that. So she pulls her homework out while I watched Linda. She looked puzzled as she searched through every page of her notebook. So Linda is looking perplexed. She's bewildered. She's so muddled. She's baffled. She's nonplussed. She's wondering where her assignment went. She held up her textbook and she shook it. All right. So imagine this is her book, and she's looking for it. She's holding up her textbook. She's shaking it. Where is her homework? I handed my homework to Mr. Pratt. So Gary gave her homework, and he stood near Linda's desk waiting for her. Linda, he said. Where's your homework? Linda leafed frantically through her notebook. So again, she's going through her notebook again. She's frantically, frenziedly, in a distraught, hurried way, going through her notebook, wondering where her homework went. She ducked through her backpack, right? So she's rummaging through her backpack. She's trying to look for her homework. She's tossing pencils and papers on the floor. She was in a total panic, right? So you could see the fright. Writ large on her face, she was looking scared. Where did her assignment disappear? You could see the trepidation, the consternation, the fright on her face. Shavi Jain is asking, Miss, can you repeat the enemy spell, the enemy incantation? I'm going to show it to you. So here you go. If you are going to do something, take a grab. <laughs> By morning, when the sun is shining, your enemy will forget. The one thing that is extremely important, this they will regret. Okay. So um, I glanced over. So we come back to Linda looking for a homework. Carrie, and Carrie is glancing at her friend Toby. He had a huge grin on his face. So Toby and Carrie are very happy because Linda, who is a mean, obnoxious, despicable. Malevolent girl can't find her homework, and she's going to get it from the teacher. Okay, I, I I can't find it. Linda stammered. I must have forgotten it. I don't know what happened. Get it to me by tomorrow, Mr. Pratt said sternly. So Mr. Pratt, who was very serious about the assignments, he was very disapproving of the fact that Linda didn't have her homework, and he said, "You better get it by tomorrow, and let's make sure this doesn't happen again." My heart thudded so hard, I thought it might explode. So Carrie is feeling very exhilarated. Her heart is pounding hard in her chest because she's so excited. Her spell worked. Now all of you asking me to repeat this spell, please don't try this spell in real life. I should have given you a disclaimer. This may not work in real life. Okay. My my spell. It worked. It really worked. It's too bad about your homework, Linda. I whispered to her. So Carrie is just, you know, trying to rub salt in Linda's wounds. Linda sneered at me, right? So she she spoke in a very mocking manner. She gave her a cruel smile. She gave Carrie a cruel smile, a mocking smile, like that. Get lost, geek. So she says, "Get lost, you unfashionable person." A geek here refers to unfashionable person. So she's bullying Carrie. So Carrie thinks to herself, "She really shouldn't have said that." Now I had to try another spell on her, right? So Carrie gets provoked, she gets instigated, and she wants to <laughs> give it back to Linda. Later in my room, I studied the enemy spells chapter. So she go when she goes back home, Carrie again is going for going through the enemy spells chapter, searching for the perfect chapter. So she's leafing through the book, searching for the perfect chapter. something really embarrassing right she's searching for the perfect incantation an embarrassing in a uh, spell a very mortifying humiliating spell something that will make linda's face turn red with shame something so bad linda would wish she had never come to school that day then i found it the perfect incantation So she found the perfect incantation, and that's why the story is called the perfect incantation. So let's see what this perfect incantation is. It was going to make school history. So Carrie's thinking to herself that everyone in school would remember this forever. It's going to make school history. 
The next day, Linda strolled into math class a few minutes early. So she walked in a very relaxed way into math class. She handed Mr. Pratt her homework. She stood by his desk with a sickening sweet smile on her face. So she tried to look like an angel like this. She had this sickening sweet smile on her face. Thank you, Linda, Mr. Pratt said. So he accepted her homework. Linda opened her mouth to say something to him. So she probably wanted to say, it's my pleasure, Mr. Pratt, and I'm so sorry. So she opened her mouth. This was it. The true test of Aunt Vera's spell book. Something was going to happen now. It was a true test. So she'd cast another spell. This was the perfect incantation. Let's see what happens next. All right, I can see all of you are excited here in the comments. I held my breath. So Carrie's waiting with bated breath. So she held her breath and waited for Linda to speak. Oh! Lisa burped. Sorry, Linda burped. So Linda, she burped deafeningly. So it was a deafening burp, a deafening belch that practically shook the walls. So she had cast the, a spell on her that whenever someone will talk to her, she won't be able to respond. She'll only burp or belch. Right? So this is what is going to happen. Yes, the spell worked. The perfect incantation worked. Mr. Pratt's mouth hung open. He gaped at Linda. Right? He's staring at her with open mouth amazement. And um, for a few seconds, everyone in class was completely quiet. Now imagine someone in your classroom goes, uh! For one second, you'll be taken aback. So everyone was absolutely quiet. And then we all cracked up. We all started laughing uproariously. We guffawed. We hooted with laughter. <laughs> like that. So, Linda, are you all right? Mr. Pratt asked. So when you're a teacher, you can't start laughing at a student. Right? So I'm telling you this as a teacher. So if a child burps, you can't just start hooting with laughter. You have to ask the kid if they're all right. So Mr. Pratt does that, being a good teacher. And Linda's face turned bright red. She turned red like a tomato. She turned scarlet with embarrassment. She opened her mouth to speak again. Oh! Right? Again. There was another ear-piercing, ear-splitting, thunderous burp, right? It was resounding, it was loud and echoing, reverberating. The second burp was even louder than the first. We all laughed so hard, Mr. Pratt had to bang the chalkboard with his ruler. So you had to bang the board with the ruler like that. Quiet please, quiet! Mr. Pratt shouted. So he's trying to gain control of the class because, because of these, these burps, these belches. The class was out of control. Toby laughed so hard. <laughs> he fell out of his chair like this. And Linda held both hands over her mouth. She was so embarrassed, so humiliated, so mortified that she, she just didn't want to open her mouth. I could see tiny beads of sweat on her forehead. So she was perspiring. She was sweating obviously because she was so embarrassed. What did you have for breakfast, Linda? Beans? Mike called out to her. So one of the boys in the class, one of the boisterous brats in class said, Oh, did you have beans? That's why you have so much gas. <laughs> Linda glared at him. She stared angrily at him. She glowered at him. She opened her mouth once more, probably to say something angry. Oh! Right? So <laughs> she looked angry. But what came out was an angry sounding burp. Linda's eyes bulged out of her head. She was so shocked that her eyes, they protruded out of her head. What's happening? They were sticking out of her face. She turned to face Mr. Pratt. And by now, Mr. Pratt, the mathematics teacher, even he was laughing, right? Even he was laughing uproariously when he couldn't control himself because she was going, oh, oh, oh. My stomach ached from laughing so hard. I could barely breathe <laughs> because of laughing because of hooting with laughter so Linda she bolted out of the room obviously out of embarrassment we could hear her burp as she ran down the hall into the bathroom so when she ran to the washroom we could hear her burp 
uh, 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 uh. Right, so she kept on doing this while running to the bathroom. What a day! Linda's burping was the talk of the school. So when something is the talk of the town, or, or in case, in this case, the talk of the school, people were talking about this the most, right? So when I saw Linda during lunch, I had to say something to her. So Carrie, she's feeling so happy. She's feeling giddy with excitement that her spell worked. And she thinks to herself, let me just rub salt in Linda's wounds this time. I couldn't wait to hear her burp again. Are you sure you want to drink that Coke, Linda? I asked her. It could be trouble. So Linda was drinking Coke, right? Like this. And Carrie says, maybe you shouldn't drink Coke. You'll burp. Linda curled her lip. Like that. Gee, that's so funny, I forgot to laugh. Right, so she's being a typical mean, despicable girl and giving it back to Carrie. She's like, oh, you're so mean, I forgot to laugh. She's being sarcastic. Huh? She didn't burp this time. The spell must have worn off. Right? So this spell must have lost its effectiveness. It must have stopped being efficacious. So we did the word efficacious also in the Harry Potter part 2 masterclass, if you remember. So yes, so the spell too must have stopped being efficacious. It must have diminished. It must have weakened by now. It must have worn off. So Carrie thinks to herself, too bad. Maybe I'll cast a new spell on her. Something even worse. So Linda continues to be a mean, obnoxious girl and Carrie wants to give it to her again. I was dying to tell my best friend Toby about my spells. Remember Toby, the one who laughed so hard he fell off the chair? So um, Carrie was dying to tell him. But I knew he'd never believe me. Would you believe it if someone told you the story that they cast a spell on someone and they kept, when, they kept going uh, 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 next day in school? You wouldn't believe it. Besides, Toby has such a big mouth. So Toby couldn't hold a secret in his stomach. He had a big mouth. I didn't want Linda to find out who was casting these spells. So Carrie didn't want everyone to know that she was casting spells. So she didn't want to tell Toby, her best friend, about it. Did you believe Linda McFly today? I asked Toby on the way home. So Carrie and Toby are walking home and they're discussing what happened in school. So they were, they were saying, could you believe what happened today in school? Toby giggled. <laughs> he chuckled, he chortled. Yeah, she was so embarrassed. I bet she wished she could McFly right out of the room. So her surname is McFly. So Toby is joking and saying that she was so embarrassed. That, that she probably wished that she could fly out of the room and disappear. That gave me a great idea. So Carrie gets a brainwave. She gets a great idea. As soon as I got home, I hurried up the stairs to my room, smiling to myself because she thinks of another perfect incantation. My next spell was going to be a masterpiece. It was going to be outstanding, a sensation, absolutely sublime. I stopped at the top of the stairs. So she stopped there because the door to my room was open. So Carrie says, someone has been inside my room. Strange, I always keep the door closed. I ran inside to look for the spell book in my desk drawer. So she's rummaging through a door looking for the book, right? This book is quite precious. It's invaluable. Gone. The book has disappeared into thin air. It has vamoosed. How could that be? I began ripping through my desk drawers, dumping each one out on the floor. I tore apart my closet, tossing things over my shoulder as I ducked to the bottom of the pile. So she's going through everything. She's searching for this book. She's scrabbling about in her wardrobe looking for this precious treasured book. Elizabeth! I screamed. Get in here! So she called her younger sister, thinking that her younger sister probably has something to do with the disappearance of this book. So she says, Elizabeth, get here! Elizabeth appeared at the door. So Elizabeth got there. She kept her eyes on the floor. So she wasn't looking up. She kept looking down. She looked very guilty. Did you th take something from my room? I demanded. No, she replied. Are you sure? I asked. I'm positive, 
she insisted. So Elizabeth protested. She argued her innocence. She said, okay, so a lot of you are saying, I think the younger sister took it. All right. I yanked up my mattress. So now, um, Carrie is desperate. She pulls up her bed mattress. I found it. There the book is. How did it get there? How was it under the mattress? Hey, what's that? Elizabeth asked innocently. So Elizabeth says, oh, what's that? I mean, she's intrigued by this gleaming, shining, scintillating, ancient looking book. None of your business. I snapped. Get out now. I, I went to the chapter called Creating Your Own Spell. So the book had this chapter called Creating Your Own Spell. So she gets to that chapter and this is what the instructions say. It said, write on a piece of paper what you want your enemy to do and add it to the jar. So similarly, she had to take the, the jar, the glass jar, write on a piece of paper what she wanted her arch rival, her arch nemesis her main enemy to do, right? And she had to put it in this jar, again, spit on it and place it in the moonlight. I took a fresh piece of paper out of my notebook. I wrote, tomorrow, when Linda McFly hears her name, I want her to think she can really fly. So, she just wants Linda to think she can fly, which means she just want, wants Linda to keep flapping her arms like a fool. So whenever Linda hears her name, she should start flapping her arms. That's what she wrote. I stuffed the paper into the jar. This was going to be great. This would probably be the next perfect incantation. The next morning, everyone was quiet when Linda strutted into the classroom. Now, Linda had had a very embarrassing day the previous day, right? With all the burping, with all the, oh! So the next day, she comes in strutting. She walks in a very stiff, erect, arrogant manner, right? Very confidently, like a model. She struts into the class. She walks in with a swagger. She tried to act as cool as ever, but I could tell she was nervous by the way she bit her lip. So she was trying to pretend to be cool. She was putting on an act. It was all a facade. You know, she was trying to act as though she's very confident and, and whatever happened didn't bother her. But Carrie could see that she was nervous because she was biting her lips slightly like this. Linda opened up her notebook as soon as she sat down. So as soon as Linda sat down, she opened up her notebook as if there was something incredibly interesting inside. So she was pretending to read. Right? She was trying not to draw attention to herself. She kept her head down as Mr. Pratt read the roll call. So Mr. Pratt was calling out their names to check who was absent or present. I held my breath until he got to her name. So he says, Mr. Pratt called out, Linda McFly! Linda's head jerked up at the sound of her name. Would my incantation work? Come on, what do you think? Tell me in the comments, do you think her incantation is going to work? All right. Um, yes. So Linda slowly got up from her chair. So Linda gets up slowly. She stretched her arm to her sides and started flapping them like wings. The incantation is working. All right. Linda, what is the matter with you? Mr. Pratt demanded. So a lot of you are saying, no, but it worked. So, so Mr. Pratt is, is befuddled. Why is Linda doing this? So he asked her, Linda, what's the matter with you? So again, she heard her name. She flapped her arms even harder. Toby burst out laughing. <laughs> what's wrong with her? We all laughed like crazy watching Linda flap her arms. Right? So she kept doing this. And now everyone starts chanting, Linda McFly thinks she can fly. Linda McFly thinks she can fly. Linda McFly thinks she can fly. So they're chanting this. And she's hearing her name again and again, again and again. And she's flapping her arms even more vigorously, even more vigorously. So each time Linda heard her name, she flapped her arms even more vigorously. Mr. Pratt banged on the chalkboard. But it was no use. It was futile. The kids shrieked with laughter as they chanted and laughed at Lisa. 
at Linda, sorry. Uh, I keep mixing these names up. All right, then an amazing thing happened. Then an amazing thing happened. Linda actually raised herself up from the floor. She was flapping her arms so hard that she actually levitated. She actually started hovering. She actually started floating. She flapped her arms frantically and raised herself higher and higher. Soon she was two feet off the ground. She's hovering. She's floating. She's levitating. She's two feet off the of the ground. So someone is saying, Gitanjali Sharma, she will try to fly and she'll act like a ninkum poop. All right. Sara Garg is wondering, does she fly? Let's find out. Whoa, wait a minute. I cried. She's really flying. Now Carrie is alarmed. Because she had written in her, in her spell that Lin, Linda should think she can fly. How is Linda actually flying? This could be very, very dangerous. This could be perilous. Now we had taught you another word for dangerous in the Harry Potter part two masterclass. It starts with T. So put down that word in the comments. Our brilliant brainy brats. Okay. Everyone stopped chanting and clapping. So everyone who was going, Linda McFly thinks she can fly. They stopped chanting because everyone is taken aback. Everyone is astounded. Mr. Pratt dropped his ruler. So Mr. Pratt is also shocked out of his wits. Linda floated to the open window, her arms flapping furiously. Right? Shilpa Gupta, perfect. Swara, perfect. Treacherous. All right, Abir Singh Negi, Nisha Somani, excellent. The word is treacherous. So this was quite treacherous. What was happening? It was very dangerous. Linda had started to fly. So we taught you this word in the Harry Potter part two masterclass. That in the fourth book of Harry Potter, there were many treacherous tasks. Right? We had taught it to you like that. So please go check out this masterclass too, if you haven't already. And if you don't remember that word, you should check out the masterclass. So the word is treacherous. Excellent work, Brady Brats. Okay. So Linda has floated to the open window. Her arms are flapping furiously, frantically, vigorously. And her classroom was three, three floors up. If she fell, she could break her bones. She could seriously injure herself. Stop her! I shouted. She'll fall! Toby and I raced to the window. Toby grabbed her around the waist. I held her feet. So they're trying to hold her down. Because Linda isn't stopping. Linda, stop! Stop flapping your arms! You can't really fly! I cried. So now Carrie is scared. She's filled with trepidation. She's petrified because what is this spell? Right? It's backfired. Something terrible could happen to Linda now. No matter how mean a person is, you don't want them to break some bones. But Linda kept flapping her arms harder and harder, trying to break away from us. So she just couldn't stop flapping her arms because of that incantation. So was it really the perfect incantation? No. I don't know how much longer I can hold her, Toby cried. So they're, they're holding her down with all their strength. Mr. Pratt, the teacher, rushed over and tried to hold Linda down. Come on, everyone! Help! I shouted. Linda kicked and thrashed. Right? So because of the spell, she, her arms were flapping. She was thrashing about. She was flailing, writhing, squirming. And everyone was struggling to hold her down. So she won't fly out and fall. I knew I had to break the spell before it was too late. I remembered there was a chapter in the book about breaking spells. So while she was going through the table of contents, she remembered that there was a spell about breaking spells. I let go of Linda's feet and ran to the door. Hold her down, everyone! I called. I'll be right back! So Carrie is trying to go back and reverse the spell using the book of incantations. I took the stairs two at a time. So when she got to a house, she raced to a house. She took the stairs two at a time. She jumped up the stairs and burst into her room. I ripped the room apart. Where was the book? Where was it? Once again, she can't find the book. Elizabeth, you little creep, did you take my... My body?
body suddenly froze. So while she's screaming for Elizabeth, she's saying, Elizabeth, you little creep, where's my book? Did you take it? And suddenly she froze. She felt as though she was she were paralyzed. I felt a strange tingle run up and down my back. So she had a prickling sensation go over her body. What's happening? My right leg twitched. Her right leg was jerking. Right? So like my, my right arm here is jerking. Her right leg was jerking. Then her left leg started jerking. I did a backflip. So she jumped backwards. Uh, I burped. A long, gross burp from deep in my stomach. So she was doing back backflips and going, uh, and this is happening to Carrie. Right? And she was releasing these abhorrent, disgusting burps from deep in her stomach. What was happening to me? Right? That something gone wrong had a spell backfired. I backflipped again. I couldn't stop myself. I backflipped out of my room and into the hallway. So she can't walk. She's only backflipping. Right? It's like doing it's like doing cartwheels but going backwards. What's uh? So every time she's trying to talk, she's burping. Uh? I flipped and burped my way into El into Elizabeth's room. Elizabeth sat on her bed. Was that the magic book in her lap? Why wasn't she at school? Did you cast a spell on me? That's what I wanted to ask her. So Carrie wanted to ask her, did you cast a spell on me? But all that came out when I opened my mouth was a disgusting, Ooh! I tried again. Ooh! So she continued burping and did another back flip. All right. So children, you see, um, this is the end of the story. I had to teach you one more little thing. So you see, Carrie started this off in good fun but she cast a very dangerous spell on Linda, which could have seriously harmed Linda. And um, her little sister, she was also mean to her little sister. So her little sister tried to do something, tried to cast a spell on her, right? So um, in a way, it was tit for tat, right? You all, you all know of the saying, as you sow, so shall you reap. This means whatever you do in the present, it will have an effect on your future. So if you do bad things, bad things may happen to you. So there is an idiom for it. it. It is to get one's just deserts. So when you get your just deserts, it means you get what you deserve. You get the punishment that you deserve. Right. So my question to you kids is, and I want you to put it down in this chat. I'll wait for you while you do it. Do you think Carrie deserved what happened to her at the end. So do you think Carrie got her just deserts? I want you to use that idiom. To get one's just deserts. When you get your just deserts, you get what you deserve. So do you think Carrie got her just deserts and why? So I want you to write a few lines about why you think Carrie got her just deserts. Alright, I'll tell you why. I think Carrie did get her just deserts because um, she was extraordinarily mean to her little sister. She always complained about Linda being despicable, but she too was so despicable to her little sister Elizabeth. And she started this off in good fun. But you see what kind of spell she cast at the end. It wasn't really the perfect incantation. So the name of the story is quite ironic, right? So the incantation wasn't really perfect because it could, it could have seriously harmed Linda. And yes, Rakesh Setia, you're absolutely right. Karma. Tiana, very good. What goes around comes around. So what do you think? Um, do you think Carrie got her just deserts or no? Alright, please put it down in the comments and why. Most importantly, why? In case you miss putting it in the live chat, no problem. This video will process and be uploaded in the next half hour. You can come back in half an hour and put it down in the comments of the video as well. Because we will choose who gives us the best answer and you will be, you'll be given stars at the end of this. So Gitanjali says, yes, she got her just deserts because she tried to humiliate her arch nemesis. Very good. But I want you to use the term, got her just deserts. 
So Pooja Jain says, I think that's Adi, Adi and Sia. Yes, Carrie got her just deserts because she was very mean to her little sister. Oh, this is Arika, sorry. And she thought that Linda was despicable. Very good. All right. Um, wonderful answer. She was mean to Elizabeth. And at first it was fun, but then she just, she, she, she did some really bad things. All right. Absolutely right. So we are done for the day. In case you missed putting your answer in the live chat, come back in half an hour and put it in the comments. All right, children. We'll see you next Sunday. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube live stream. All right. I'm going to see you now. Soon. Bye. See you.